and today I'm going to actually be doing a live video. And we're going to look at the Rio Rondo saddle kit, uh, what's involved in it, and how we can turn this into a Western Pleasure setup. Uh, we're going to be looking at making the saddle, tooling the saddle, uh, fitting it to a horse, and figuring out which doll is going to ride it and how the doll is going to be dressed. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the saddle. One thing I have decided to do is to add silver to my saddle. I have chosen the Southwestern set, which is the 150 set. So on RioRondo.com, they provide an alternative patterns for their different sets. So this one I'm showing right here says it's good for the 150 set. So I will be adding this to my pattern selection. And you can see online, it shows you where the silver goes each different piece. So we will be covering that as we get to it. So inside the saddle kit, you will receive a resin uh, saddle set tree, some lace for the uh, bridle, some very basic buckles and hardware. You will get your tooling leather and a piece of transfer paper to put patterns onto the tooling leather. And then you'll get some skiver, some chamois, and a, few, and a piece of saddle uh, leather for the saddle seat. It will also come with a full set of instructions and the patterns. As most of my models are currently in storage still, I am going to use Totally Tommy as my victim, my Western Pleasure Horse. Uh, in my measurement video, I've shown you how to measure, he comes to approximately 14, three to 15 hands. And based on that, I'm looking at the dolls I have. Based on that, this classic scale Brayer doll comes to five foot. My uh, Yvonne doll comes to five foot seven. And this Brayer doll comes to six foot. I have decided by putting the dolls on the model, sitting on top of the saddle, resin saddle seat. Whoops, sorry, Tommy. I like the idea of having a youth rider sitting at around five foot riding a 14 three hand horse. As you can see, she sits quite well in there. And when you add a youth doll, you can do a lot more colors for the outfit. So I have chosen this is the setup. So when I'm making the saddle, I will take her into account when I'm building it. I may actually make the saddle a little less deep for her, but otherwise I think she's a perfect fit for this. Now the Yvonne doll also sits very well on her, on him. However, I find the Brayer doll right now is a little large for poor little Tommy. You'd need a lar larger Western Pleasure horse because for Western Pleasure, you want a nice fit of the rider and the horse. So right now we're gonna go with Tina. So going forward, Tina's gonna get the full outfit to match the new saddle, saddle pad, bridle, and breastplate. So as for the colors I'm gonna use on the saddle, first I've determined what I'm gonna use for the rider. So Tina is gonna have an outfit made from teal, medium brown, medium to dark brown, and black. And I'm gonna be using these nail beads for doing your nails for sparkles. So with these colors, I think that looks nice on this color horse. And I think it works on a lot of different color horses. So with that being said, for the actual saddle, I think I'm gonna stay with a natural color and I'm going to bring out the same brown for the seat and for the highlights. So I've got both the brown color, plus I have a medium brown 
stain for leather. So that is going to be the color palette I'm working with here. So before we actually get started, I would like to mention I'm also going to be using cast stirrups. So we're not going to be cutting out stirrup parts. So also for the model, I'd recommend using a body model. I don't have any, so totally Tommy here is now wrapped in saran wrap. At least it'll help a little bit. Now, when you go onto the Rio Rondo site, they'll have some information on the alternative patterns. And what I have chosen to do is to have a single girth, the front de-rigging and rear slot, this one right here. So a single girth, nice and fancy for a Western Pleasure saddle. And that's the one we're gonna go ahead with. First, I would recommend you read the instructions. The instructions that are given in this fully from front to back, because I'm not gonna cover the instructions the way they're done here. I'm gonna do it the way that I've always done it in the past or how I've learned that works for me. So you may wanna take, try it first with the regular instructions and then see if any of my tips help you out. So let's get started. On page two of the instructions, it tells you to use the tooling film and a pencil and the, use that to transfer the pattern onto the leather piece because this section of the pattern should fit perfectly onto the tooling leather. However, that's not what I'm gonna do. So first of all, I'm gonna start by cutting out all the pieces that are relevant to the saddle I would like to make. So I won't be cutting out the rear billets. I won't be cutting out the stirrups. Uh, and on this section, there is different breastplate variables that you can choose. And with the other patterns, there's different fenders. So I'm going to mix and match and cut out the full saddle. Okay, you can see that I've cut out all the pieces, not exactly, but very close. Uh, I've got the main lower skirt, the upper skirt, two, uh, two seat pieces, a cantle support. Then I cut out the thin curved cantle. I decided to cut out stirrups since we do have silver. I do have silver here for the stirrups. I've got the front billets, cinch keeper, front cinch, and I've taken the fenders from the special pattern and I taped it on to the other one. And I'm gonna use cut out along the lines of the special fenders. And I have the thin breast collar. Even though Western Pleasure doesn't usually use breast collars anymore, uh, I'm still gonna make it because a lot, of the, a lot of people in the models still use them. So I've used I've reviewed the corner plate guidelines to make sure my plates are gonna go where I want them. And I've looked to make sure they're gonna fit fairly decently on the corner. So at this point, I'm gonna get ready to cut out the first set of leather. And I do this in stages as I may change my mind along the way what I'm gonna do. So right now, what I wanna do is take these pieces and so cut them out of this. I've got scotch tape and the piece of tooling leather that came with the kit. And it is Rio Vondo LVT18. So with the right side down, I am going to tape these pieces with the right side up so I can see them onto the leather as close as possible. And with this tape, I'm just gonna do it roughly, but in enough places so that it doesn't shift during cutting. Because it's on the wrong side, you don't have to worry about the tape ruining, the, damaging the leather. And I'm gonna set the pieces up to best use the leather, best way possible. So once I've done this, I will come back and show you what I've got. Okay, so now I've got this all taped down and you can see how I've laid it out and there's still extra room. We're gonna be using some of this leather if we don't have any extra for practicing our tooling. So at this point, you're gonna carefully with sharp scissors, cut all these pieces out. Now, something like the breast collar, I only put one piece on. So once I cut it out, I'm gonna to have to tape it back on and cut out a second piece, but everything else is complete. 
So once I get back, finish cutting it all out slowly, I will be back. I would recommend doing all your cutting out with very sharp scissors. Mine aren't that great. It took me at least half an hour to get everything cut out. You have to be very careful because that gives you the overall look of the saddle. Uh, with the pattern left over, I put a T on that for tooling leather and I keep that in an envelope so I can reuse it again later. And I have to remove all the tape off the back of the leather to make sure there's none left. So I have all my parts. I only cut one billet strap. I used, uh, I only needed one. And I also check to make sure the length looks good on the horse. And this is the medium length that's available. I think that's good for Tommy. So all my pieces here are ready to start the set. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut, use the main plates silver, and I'm gonna cut out the plates and the horn cap. Now to do this, you need wire cutters, uh, craft snippers, sharp scissors, or whatever you can to get in and carefully cut the edges. Once you have the piece cut, you can then trim it down, these little edge pieces, trim those down tighter, and then sand the edges so that it's smooth. And I'm gonna do that with all the corner pieces and the horn piece. If you find one that's hard to cut out, the easiest thing to do is just bend the metal back a little bit and you can get your scissors in there to trim it off. And the second one, you can also twist and it comes off. And then it's easy to just to take down. I found these scissors were enough to do the job. I didn't need anything fancy and I really didn't need to sand it. But depending on which ones you have, you might need a little more care to them. At this point, I have them all cut out. And now we're going to try them on the saddle. I've used the Rio Rondo map to show me where to place the silver. You can see in the image, I've placed the medium sized ones on the stair fenders and the large ones at the back, the small ones at the front and the medium one on the upper skirt. And what I wanna see is if the corners will fit perfectly to the piece. If they don't, I can use sandpaper and while I'm prepping the edges, I can work it so that these will be perfectly round. And I'd like to show a little bit of leather around the outside when it's done, but it'd be the same amount. So sandpaper can round that off to make it fit perfectly. 